59% of consumers prefer to buy from brands that they know, like, and trust. And part of that is having a name that is familiar with the brand and familiar with the consumer. So choosing the perfect name for your clothing brand is going to be a significant step in establishing your, your whole identity. And I say perfect, but there's really no such thing as perfect. Like this video is really gonna help you, right? Craft something that is going to be unique and memorable, but definitely not perfect. Now, before we delve into the actual creation of, of your name, I think we, we need to take a little bit of a step back and actually have a good understanding of your identity. So, and I know your logo and your name is sort of part of your brand's identity, but you need to just grab a piece of paper, grab a piece of pen and start writing down what is gonna make your brand unique, what values does it uphold. I want to imagine really your brand as a character in a story, right? What trace does it is it defined by, right? Understanding the essence of your brand, you're gonna lay out a little bit of that groundwork at the beginning. And really like to me, like I'm a very visual person, so having things in my in my brain is not gonna be good. So putting it down on paper to me is the first step that you need to do. It's trying to figure out if my brand was personified, you know, who would this brand be? You know, how would they act around other people? How would they talk to other people, right? What type of emotion do you want people to feel when they speak to this personified brand, right? And all these little things, all these little adjectives and words that will come to your mind, you want to write them down because some of these things will definitely help you in the creation of your name. And later in the video, we'll actually get into some breakdown actual types of names. So we can actually give you some better examples on things that you can do with little exercises that you can do. But this to me is a groundwork for any other step that you will create. So the next step after having your sort of brand identity, right, those, those adjectives, those emotions, it's also in conjunction to that, it's actually brainstorming a few keywords. And how you can do this is just start making a list of associated words with your brand identity. So you've identified these keywords, you've identified something like, for example, it's happy, right? The, just the word happy. That word happy, you can break down into 30 other words, right? And you can do this very easily nowadays with AI. So back in the day, we had to resort to potentially dictionaries and books and just looking for other sources, just plain old Googling. But nowadays you can just go to ChatGPT and say, give me related keywords for the word happy and it will list some, some keywords in there. And I think that that's the way to really truly use use AI within the creation of your name, I would not necessarily go straight into AI and give me names for a clothing brand, right? I think you're gonna get very, very poor results. But I think if you do like no AI for the groundwork again, for your brand, how does it operate? How does it interact with other people? And then start brainstorming a few keywords. And like I said, brainstorming a few keywords by yourself is gonna be more beneficial than relying on AI. I think AI can use it to expand on your initial ideas. And again, some of these keywords could include things like emotions, style elements, themes you want to you know, convey within your brand. So these keywords, again, th this will serve as the building blocks to actually creating a name that truly encapsulates your brand's identity and that you feel comfortable, that you feel that this is the actual direction that I wanna take for my brand's name. Now let's dive into some of my favorite types of names, right? And again, this will help you really develop your own unique name as long as you know, you know some examples. So some of my favorites for clothing brands are going to be descriptive names. So think of the North Face or American Apparel. These types of brands really have taken that first exercise to heart, right? And really dug deeper into who their audience was going to be and named the brand something that, something like, like just like it implies, right? It's a, it's a description almost of, of who they're trying to aspire or the type of people that, you know, the customers, right, for, for this particular brand. Another really popular type of name and a lot of boutiques, women's clothing boutiques actually follow this is just using the founder's name right? Or even using your children's names, right? A lot of times we've seen names that actually take over, you know, the children's name, which is kind of cool, right? Now, I will say that founders' names, I think, are great. If you as a founder are going to be sort of the face of the company, at least for the beginning, that way that customer can actually create a better connection with your brand. Because, I mean, if my brand is named Christian Pignon, but I'm nowhere to be seen, it's just maybe a little bit weird. Obviously, you see brands like Ralph Lauren and Christian Dior, right? But I think at 
some point, right, that founder was very, very much ingrained into the ins and outs of, of that brand from the, from the very beginning. And I think that's what we're trying to get to. Obviously, you see those luxury brands that have some, some crazy names, but you don't even know, you can't, you can't put a face to, to, the, to the name, but at that point, they just, you know, sort of blown up. Hey, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button so this video gets recommended to other people. You know, that will help us. Another one of my favorites is abstract or invented names. So think like Google, Kodak, right? But these abstract or invented names just work really well because you can actually create something from scratch, something very unique and really have, you know, full reign of possibilities on how your brand is gonna be portrayed by your customers, right? If you name your brand something like Soft Pillows, <laughs> very generic, right? People are already going to have some kind of idea of what your brand is. They're gonna have some kind of idea of how Soft Pillows should look. So be very careful, right, <laughs> about naming your brand. And that's why I tend to gravitate towards abstract or sort of in the names because you have full reign on how you're going to present yourself to the world. Another good one is geographical names. I think these tend to do good, but especially if, I mean, if you're trying to create a brand that will sort of bypass geographical location, then you might kind of be weary about using this, but it can actually connect with people a lot closer, especially if you're just starting, you know, maybe a brand in Colorado, you're calling it Boulder Clothing Apparel Company, right? That could kind of connect the audience audience with what your product eventually is going to become. And even if it's, you know, people from all over the world buy from it, it still gives you a sense of belonging, a sense of uniqueness to your brand. And it gives it also a little bit of a personality. Now, a few things to avoid when coming up with a name, I would say do not overcomplicate things and make sure that the spelling and how you pronounce it is something that it's very easy to do. You don't wanna be something like, this is not a clothing brand, but Zapier, right? They have to actually create a commercial that Zapier makes you happier, right? That it rhymes with the word happier so that people would know how to actually say it. You definitely don't want to run into that where people, it's sort of ambiguous, right? On how do you actually say that particular name? Obviously, some other mistakes Mistakes, you don't want to be too literal, right? Back in the maybe 1800s, like it made sense to do American apparel, right? But nowadays, those type of generic keywords are going to be very, very hard for you to actually rank anything higher, you know, than even the first 10 pages, right? If, if you were to come up with the name, let's say American apparel didn't exist and you just came up with that name, American apparel is going to be very hard to rank for on the first page of Google if those are gonna be the only two words that represent your brand. So also be looking into that, right? I think it, it sort of transcends availability of the actual you know, name. It also, you have to think about searchability. So that's definitely one of my, my tips is search that particular name that you found on everywhere. Like use Google, right? That's definitely gonna be the first place, but then use Bing, right? Use DuckDuckGo, use all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, literally search it as a singular word search it as a plural, search it as a hashtag. All these things are definitely going to give you an idea of how this word or how this combination of words are being used on the web. So both on search engines and social media platforms. And then the last mistake, it's uh, ignoring family feedback, friends and family feedback. That's what usually one of the first places that you go to after you've had that eureka moment of like, yes, this is my, my brand name. You tend to go to family and friends and like, hey, check this out, right? A lot of times friends and family are gonna be like, yeah, man, Good job, you know, that sounds good, it's great. They may be more, you know, more honest with you. And a lot of times you've spent all this time, right, coming up with this perfect brand name. So I think a lot of times people tend to give friends and family the one name, but I think it'd be more beneficial, I think in my eye, to give them two or three options and then have them actually explain the reasoning behind why they think the brand name should be that. I think that exercise alone, I think is gonna give you better feedback than just giving them that one name and then telling you like, yes or no, whatever, you kinda have to go back to the drum, Board, and you're also probably falling in love with that particular name, so it's gonna hurt, right? It's gonna hurt a lot. Now we talked a little bit about being available, right? Or, or seeing how that particular name could be used right now on social media and Google, but you also want to make sure that you check the actual availability, right? So again, before you literally fall in love, check the domain name and check social media platforms. Obviously you can always get a little bit creative, right? Even there's a lot of, of apps out there, right? That they come up with a, a really cool name or maybe something even could be a little bit generic, but then the .com may not be available, right? But then they get a little bit creative. They say, okay, instead of this is gonna be called, you know, Glide, you know, this company's called Glide.com, it's not available. Then maybe we can do getglide.com, right? By adding certain maybe verbs or, or adjectives to the actual domain name, they're able to actually use that moving forward. And then they use 
that get glide on Facebook, Instagram, social media, et cetera. So it's more of a, a clear naming. You're almost adding that as sort of a, I don't know, like a prefix, right, to, to your actual name. And it becomes sort of part of your brand. So that's something that people do, but would I recommend it? No, I mean, I would, I think ideally, the ideal scenario would be for you to find glide.com and for glide to be available on social media platform. And obviously going beyond just like whether the name is available or not, it's just making sure that, yeah, there's no trademark conflicts, right? This is something that we cannot stress enough and you will definitely have to hire legal counsel, right? To ensure that this brand name is something that you can actually legally use within your country. Now, the last piece of advice that I will leave you with is there is a percentage of people that think that your brand name really doesn't matter and that uh, that is actually hindering you from actually getting started and start selling your product. Almost like oh, a 50-50, right? Like I do think the brand name is something that's important and that you should take some of these things into consideration. But I think at the end of the day, you are gonna make the brand, right? The name is not really gonna dictate whether the brand is successful or not. It's going to be you. It's going to be the actions that you take each and every day within your business business and ensuring, right, that those actions follow along with what your customers want, what your potential customers would want, right? And with that being said, I want to invite to watch our best practices on Shopify that you want to make sure that you do for your business. And again, this may be you think you're skipping a step, but this is really, truly a video that everyone needs to watch. Check it out.